Hi everyone, my name is Jay Flores and I am the Global STEM Ambassador at Rockwell Automation. I'm here to help you with your child's math homework. So if you have a child between the grades of third and fifth grade, this activity today is great for you. If you don't have a child within that age group, you still might be able to complete this activity. Um, and if not, tune in later uh, for other great videos for different age groups um, supporting you in your new role as your at-home math teacher. Um, I know this is a subject that many of you may have struggled with in the past, many of you may not consider yourself a math person, but hopefully these activities will help reduce some of that anxiety. Hopefully you can uh, be more prepared and ready for those periods so you don't have to pass that on to your child and that they do feel confident that they can succeed in math. Um, this is brought to you by Rock Automation and also our partner Mind Research Institute that creates all kinds of great math support. You can head to stmath.com slash coronavirus to have free access to their online resources. I highly recommend that and also at the end I'll tell you a little bit about this math night game that they provide. So today's activity is going to be a fun activity that you can do at home with Legos or you can do with other act, um, things around the house. So I'll give you the Lego activity and also the alternate uh, solutions if you don't have Lego at home or you um, don't have enough of what you need for the activity. So what you do need for the activity is at least 20 of any kind of object. Uh, that could be 20 Lego Duplo blocks, it could be 20 pennies, it could be 20 beans, uh, whatever it is that you have easily available around the house. If you do have a significant amount of Lego bricks, you um, will need those as well. If not, you'll definitely need a piece of paper. We want to try to avoid the use of paper because we don't want this to feel like homework. We want it to feel like a fun activity that happens to have a lot of math in it. Um, but if you don't have a lot of Lego at home, then uh, you'll definitely need some paper for drawing. Because in the first part of the activity, you're gonna challenge your child to build five of something or draw five of something. And you want that to be five of something that they're passionate about. One of the keys with math is that a lot of students don't realize the real life applications and they ask that question, why would I ever need to use this again in my life? To them, math is just a, filling out a bunch of uh, worksheets with different numbers over and over again. And who was ever inspired by a pile of worksheets. So this activity will help make it more fun, make it more hands-on, and at the beginning it's really gonna feel like playtime uh, before you even, they even notice they're doing any math. So step one is to build five of something or draw five of something. So let's say your child is super passionate about um, like going to the aquarium and they really miss going to the aquarium, then have them draw five different animals that they loved when they saw uh, that they saw at the aquarium last time they went or if they love sports have them build five different um, sports balls or draw them out right so I've got a wide variety but let's say we started with you know our animals so I had you know my child right here myself <laughs> draw out build in my scenario build two animals I built a Nemo looking for duck, uh, fish and I built a duck, right? You're gonna have them build out the five. So now we have a baby duck. Maybe your child is passionate about space and planes and stuff. So here's a helicopter. Again, they don't have to be five of the same type of objects. They just need to be tied to your child's passion so we can connect math and help them see math in um, that area that they already like. And then let's say we've got a heart, right? So I've got these five objects that I built prior to the activity, but you're gonna start your activity with your child by having them build out these objects. That's step one. Once they have their objects built or drawn on the sheet of paper, if you don't have enough Lego at home, then you're gonna start creating the math problems. And this is gonna be very visual, and that's what's gonna help bring it to life to them. If you think about the way that we kind of learn and adapt in the world, you usually draw back on what you already know. And if you just see this worksheet with a bunch of numbers and symbols that you haven't really seen put in that combination before, your child may struggle to understand the concepts, um, especially if you're learning from home and you don't have all the resources that they would normally have at school. So what we're gonna try to do is help them visually see the math first before they even start 
doing a physical division problem. So today we're going to be focusing on division for grades three to five. Um, again, if your child is older or younger, they can still do a similar activity. Uh, they just may use, for example, the younger kids will only be able to, to divide by smaller numbers, so they'll use less blocks and less animals. As your child gets older, you can use more. Um, so here's going to be our first problem. What you're going to do is you're going to take two of their built items and you're going to take four of your sharing items. We'll call these sharing. This is another great way to look at division in, in, in the terms of fair sharing. So you're going to have them show, say, you know, show me your two favorite uh, animals that you built or your two favorite spaceships that you built. So they put the two out there and you're going to provide them with four of your bricks or four of your pennies, whatever it is that you have uh, available in the home. And you're going to ask them to divide them equally amongst the two objects. So I need you to share these between the two. You can make it kind of a storyline. You can say, we're back at the aquarium and we want to help feed our animals and I need you to help divide the food equally between the animals so that everyone gets their fair share. So your child will then take these and physically move them to each of their animals. Um, they may right away realize, okay, I've got two animals and I've got four of these, so I'm just gonna put two and two. At the younger ages, they may need to physically start actually moving them one by one. Regardless, the key is that they see it, that they visually do the division. Because what they did on paper, on regular math, is four divided by two, right? So now they have seen it. This is phase one of the activity. And you wanna do this for as long as it takes to them to get very comfortable doing the division um, at a wide variety. So now let's say, Okay, now we have our two animals, um, and we also now have a baby duck at the aquarium. And we want to divide a new amount, so you'll grab a new amount. Let's say this time we're gonna do 10 total. Or sorry, let's do 12 total. So you'll set them out randomly. You don't want them to see any hints towards what it is already. You say, I need you to divide up the new food now between our two original animals and the baby duck. So again, they might start doing it one by one. They might grab groups of two. Um, you know, however it is that they're comfortable doing it, the key is that at the end, they end up with four towers or piles of items that are equal. And you can visually show that to them at the end, say, good job, you did it equal. Um, division, you fairly shared all of these across. You can put something on top of it, however you like, just to show them how they did the math. And again, if you don't have the Lego bricks or the Lego duplo bricks, you can do it on the piece of paper so the, the three animals that they drew, you say, okay, these three now, can you divide your items amongst those? Um, let's just do one more, for example, let's do a harder one. So let's do, we're gonna have now our helicopter, because we like helicopters, um, if, if that's what your child is excited about. And now we've got 16 of these bricks and have them do the same thing. So keep on going. Um, Try around, see if they have struggles with specific numbers and, and, and try to give them more and more examples uh, so that they can continue getting comfortable with that. Then from there, you will go into the next phase where you're taking away the actual division blocks and you're just showcasing, let's say two, right? So mama duck and baby duck. And you're gonna say, okay, now we have 10 items. How many does each get? And now they can't physically move them anymore. They still can see the two ducks, but they don't have the ability to physically move the bricks between the ducks. 
And so that makes it a little bit more complicated, but there's still a visual aspect to it. There's still a story to it. It's still a little bit of fun and different than just writing it out on a sheet of paper. Later on, you can then go into actual division problems on a sheet of paper like they might see on a regular test. And I would also encourage you to do some word problems. You don't have to actually write out the word problems, but you can um, have it as a conversation with your child. So you could, again, remove these, or you can keep them if you'd like, and you could say, okay, if we have um, two ducks and we have uh, 10 pieces of food, how do we divide them up amongst the ducks? And you may even have them write out some of those problems so that they can physically or visually see uh, the, the math problem. So, that's uh, the activity. I hope that you guys have fun with that and you help your child get from the physical uh, division and fair sharing all the way ready to do more of the traditional on paper. But either way, if they enjoy this uh, visual version, they're gonna be much more prepared to do the, the paper version later on. Last thing I'll leave you guys with is these two boxes right here. So this is a, a Math Minds uh, Family Math Night game. So these are kind of a, a game that you can have at home with your family that is also teaching math. Uh, and if you stay tuned to my account and to the Rockwell Automation Instagram account, pretty soon you will be seeing um, how you can win these. There's an English version and a Spanish version. So stay tuned for more of these activities and also to find out how you can get your hands on one of these awesome games, which is a great coronavirus activity that is both educational and entertaining. Again, my name is Jay Flores. I'm the Global STEM Ambassador at Rockwell Automation. Thank you to our partners, Mind Research Institute, and I hope you guys have a lot of fun with this. So please tag me uh, in any of the activities that you do at home with your kids. I'd love to see them, and I'll definitely share them. Thank you.